Good morning, world. In Cloverland, I want to say thank you for joining us this morning. God is good. He has again blessed us to see this day, a day that wasn't promised to any of us, and we ought to be forever grateful of that blessing. It is my uh, privilege and honor to stand among God's people to you today as we worship God today in spirit and in truth. We want to tell our visitors we are so excited that you have joined us, whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook Live. Uh, we want to let you know that you are <clears throat> what we are trying to do. We want to let you know that uh, we do this for the purpose of the kingdom of God here at the Cloverland Church of Christ. We lift up Jesus here and no one else. And so we want to let you know that you are in the right place at the right time serving the right God. And uh, we want to remind you to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We will want to be a part of your life as you be a part of ours. Hey, uh, members, don't forget to comment live on our Facebook Live. Share the message today and like uh, what, we, what we're going to do today. Uh, we are just excited. I'm excited uh, because I know what God is about to do today through what we're going to study and uh, through our praise and worship and even through our scripture reading. And so if you don't mind, pray with me. Dear Father God, thank you for this moment and this time. Thank you for waking me up on this morning and all those who are under the sound of my voice. Thank you for guiding us on this way and allowing us to see this day, a day that wasn't promised. And we ought to be forever grateful of that blessing. Father, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus today. Protect us from all, all evil and uh, just continue to let the light shine through us and in us as we serve you on this side of life. Father, we are honored to, to stand in your presence. Uh, and uh, Father, we just are grateful of your, you, you, how you bestow your grace and mercy upon us each and every day, even though we don't deserve it. And so for those visitors who are joining us, we want to ask, oh God, that you open up their hearts to the message today, as well as our members who have may have some, uh, a, a long week, uh, may have some, some problems that have come their way, some health situations, whatever the case may be. We ask that you intervene, uh, that you send the spirit in their house, uh, that you allow them to, to uh, be sensitive and uh, open to the word today uh, and that their heart uh, uh, <clears throat> be uh, uh, in the right, in the right, in the right, uh, in the right train, th train of, of mind. And so God, we, uh, uh, just appreciative again. Uh, we just ask that the, all we do today uh, <clears throat> be ble be uh, pleasing and acceptable to thee. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us at this moment and at this time. Uh, we are forever grateful of the blessing. Now we'll go to, uh, we'll have two song, uh, congregational songs, uh, and then we'll come back with Mission Moment. Oh 
to Jesus the mighty to say, He took my sins and sorrows and beauty for ashes gave. Peace, peace, glorious peace, like tranquil waters flow. Streaming down over my heart, made white as the driven snow. I came to Jesus repenting, confessing my every sin. My heart's door swung wide open, and glorious peace flowed in. Peace like tranquil waters flow, streaming down over my heart, made white as a driven snow. And since that joyful moment of glorious peace to me, my soul has ceased its finding, my heart has been light and free. Peace, peace, glorious peace, like tranquil waters flow. Streaming down over my heart, made white as the dream. Oh, praise be the name of Jesus. What two, two wonderful uh, selections of songs that were selected at this time. And uh, I just love uh, uh, the part of our, our singing uh, here virtually. And, and I'm just praying and, and eagerly waiting God's will, uh, let his will be done, that we can get back into the building and, uh, and we can sing collectively. Uh, as, a, as a church here at Cloverland. And we want to invite our, church, our uh, visitors to join us when we have our grand opening. I uh, want to let you know that we had a, have a beautiful e Ephesus here at the Cloverland Church of Christ. We just had a renovation uh, of our building, of our uh, whole building last year. God blessed us with that. And uh, so we want, if you are looking for a right place for your family to to serve, the, uh, serve God, your, your, your children, to, to be active in the youth group and, and et cetera. Cloverland is the place for you. And so we want to remind you that we're having a grand opening pretty soon, coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. We want to invite you on that uh, to be a part of that grand opening. Now we'll go to a mission moment. Uh, as I've shared with Cloverland over this past month, we are continuing to pray for Malawi. And then last week we had uh, on, our, uh, on our hearts and minds uh, our members here at the Cloverland Church of Christ. And we're going to do that again this week. Uh, and I want to encourage our members uh, to, 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 to continue to call one another and um, continue to uh, 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 go out and see if there is any need here for, uh, for our members, uh, rather they're widows or the seasoned saints. For those who are shut in, uh, if they're having any need of water or, uh, or, or, or uh, if they uh, have a need of you going uh, grocery shopping for them, just to do that act of kindness. And so we want to encourage one another to do that this week again. And then also we're going to continue to pray for Malawi as we uh, uh, send those items uh, to them. Uh, let's pray. Dear Father God, thank you for this moment in time. Thank you again for as we come and uh, come to you and letting you know that we want to be used by you uh, not only today, but uh, as, a, as a congregation. As I have uh, expressed and uh, diligently uh, tried to encourage the members here through the, through the Holy Spirit, uh, <clears throat> through your commandment, that uh, we ought to be servants. And that requires us to not only give our time, but also our resources. And so, God, I, I first ask, God, that you continue to bless our hands so that we can be a blessing to others. Give us that heart to understand that it's better to give than to receive. 
Uh, and, and we want to do that at this time. We want to show who we are. We want to represent Christ here at the Cloverland Church of Christ. And so for our, our shut-in members and for our, our seasoned saint members and our widows, we want to let them know that they're on our hearts and, they're, and we have a great concern for their well-being. And uh, we want to serve them in, in any way that we can. Uh, and so we want to let them know as they watch us today that uh, we love them, that uh, we're praying for them, and that we're here uh, if they're in, in, in any need that they see fit. Also, we want to remind ourselves to continue to pray for, the, for those uh, churches in Africa, and, and not only in Africa, but all over the world. We, would, we will most importantly want to continue to pray for the missionary uh, uh, Priestley as he, he's trying to uh, <clears throat> plant churches in Africa and uh, make sure that everything is well. And so we just pray, God, that as we do this transition, as we send those things, that uh, your will be done and that everything goes smoothly. Uh, Father, we, we just again I want to be the beacon of light that this, that, that this world is in dire need of. So help us here to do that and, uh, and help your name be glorified and honored. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us. If you're just now joining us, we're, we're excited. <laughs> we're excited. I'm the minister, Darius Woods. We're excited that you are a part of what we're trying to do here at the Cloverland Church of Christ. And so we'll go to uh, our, uh, another transition of our worship service, which is scripture reading, uh, and then meditation and prayer. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you don't mind, to the book of Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, amen. You have Genesis, and then after Genesis, you have the Exodus, where the children of Israel uh, had made that exit out of Egypt. And so we have the exodus of, uh, of the children of Israel coming out of Egypt uh, in bondage. And so in Exodus chapter 33, we'll read three verses, verses 12 through 15, and I'll read it out of the King James Version of the Bible. And the Bible says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. And consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give you, or rather thee, rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us up hence. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and readers and doers of his word today. Our lesson will be titled, Knowing God Intimately. Knowing God Intimately. Oh, I come to tell you today. It is vital, it is very important, church and visitors and the Christian world, to, that we all, myself, know God intimately. So sit down, stay tuned. You're going to be blessed today by the Word of God, uh, and uh, we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. Let us pray, let us meditate at this time. I hope and pray that uh, your life has been uh, joyous and that uh, your week, rather, has been joyous, and even, even though it has not, or maybe you may have had some problems, that you've kept God in the midst because he will bring you out of any and every storm. And so let's meditate. Let's thank God for that. Let's thank God for what he is doing and about to do and is doing in our life today. Let us think on the goodness of God and his son and what he's doing and what we can do through them. Amen. So meditate with me. Amen. Father God, we're grateful of this time and this moment, and I'm just excited to be your servant. I'm excited you brought me out of darkness into your marvelous light. I'm excited that you're using me as your vessel today, uh, a man who is unworthy, a man that is, uh, has faults and, and doubts and fears and, uh, and imperfections, 
but but you, you you gave me this opportunity through grace and through your mercy and not only me god but those who are, are watching all over the world even here our members at cloverland bless them oh god continue to strengthen them give them long life give them long and great health continue to uh, bless their relationships and their marriages and their income their finances and their their homes their children you know and, and their workplace and and even those who may be out of work and bless them with a with a job as our as our country and world uh, try to get back to normality normality bless the world and bless continue to bless the scientists as they continue to uh, distribute uh, these these vaccines and, and just allow our hearts uh, to to recognize that uh, that some of this stuff is, is working and that uh, that we were able to to to, to get back uh, and to uh, 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 at least worshiping you together. And so, Father, we just hope and pray that as uh, these things occur uh, in our lives and in our in our uh, in our in our court, in our circles that uh, we, we, we continue to be the light that's needed in, in this darkened world. We're always forever grateful of you and your love. And we hope and pray that what we've done thus far have been pleasing and acceptable to thee and that it has been edifying to the body of Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everyone today will do one or two things as we begin our lesson today. This lesson will bless us, I promise you. Stay tuned, don't be distracted. Share the message again, because this is gonna bless somebody today. But, 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 while, but while you're doing that, and while you're getting settled down, uh, everyone today will do one of two things. You'll crown him or you'll, you will crucify him. You say, well, I'll do neither, Brother Woods. Well, oh, you can't just be neutral today. And Jesus said, he who is not with me is against me. Everybody, listen, everybody will leave your living room. I would say if you were in the church building, you would leave this church building, but you're, you're in your living room or you're driving wherever you are. You at work at your desk or you'll leave your bedroom today unless the Lord comes first. And then I guess we'll leave it also, but we'll go this way. Uh, but but as you leave church, everybody will walk out of that place wherever you are today, either under the blood or over the blood. That is, you will receive Christ as your personal savior and his blood will become the atonement for your sin or else you will trample beneath your feet the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and church, you just can't be neutral in your spiritual walk. If you don't accept him, you reject him. And if you don't confess him, you deny him. You don't, and if you don't crown him, you crucify him. So there is a good question today. What would you do with Jesus? I pray that before this service comes to a conclusion, that you will have said an everlasting yes to the Lord Jesus. Tell your neighbor, today we need to say an everlasting yes to the Lord Jesus. So take your Bibles. You're already there. If you just now join us, take your Bibles and then turn with me to Exodus chapter 33. Would you please? Amen. And we're going to look at a very wonderful passage of scripture. One that burns my heart, Cloverland, every time I look at it. Exodus chapter 33. And I want to begin in verse 12 in a moment. I, I want to talk to you today about knowing God intimately, knowing God intimately. Now, how important it is, church, not, not that you know about God, but that you know God. I reminded church before I get into the lesson, Jesus would told us in Matthew chapter seven, verse 21 and follow. He says, uh, everyone will say to me on that day. Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not cast out demons? Have I not done this? And have I not served you? Have I not been to church every Sunday? Have I not did this and that? And the Lord said, no, you have not. You that have worked in iniquity, depart from me because I never knew you. I, he know of you, yes, because he created you, but he never had that intimate relationship with you today. And so I want you and me to gain 
an intimate relationship with God. I don't want any of us to hear those words from Matthew 7, 21. And so many of you, like I said, need to learn or need to get this today down in your heart and in your mind. You need to build your relationship with God. Now, how important it is, church, not that you know about God, but that you know God. Many of you uh, uh, know about uh, President Biden, but you don't know President Biden. Are you following? Many of you know about Abraham Lincoln. He's dead and gone. And I'm not asking, do you know about the God of the Bible, or even the God who exists now? But, but do you know him? Do you have an intimate relationship with him? For you see, my dear friend, to know him is to love him. And, and church, and to love him is to trust him. And to trust him is to obey him. And to obey him is to be blessed. And we need to be blessed. And therefore, we need to know God intimately. And so I've come today to ask you a question. Do you know him? And I didn't ask you, do you know about him? Every, all, everyone in the world, even those who don't believe in God, know about him. He is a bright living reality uh, uh, to everyone. But, but, but my question is, is he a bright living reality in your life to you? Well, look at our scripture today. And Moses Erred, begged and pleaded with God that he, 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 that he, 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 he could have an opportunity, a, a chance just to get to know God on a personal level. And so we're talking about how to know God, church, intimately. I begin in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 12. And the Bible says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See that thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, the Bible says, furthermore, I know thee by name, and thou hast found grace in my sight. Church, that is, God, you know me. Now notice in verse 13. Now, therefore, I pray thee, uh, he says, if I have found grace in your sight, or show me your way that I may know thee. Oh God, I want you to know, I want to know you like you know me, that I may find grace in your sight, he says. And consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, that is Moses said back to the Lord, uh, if thy presence go not with me, uh, carry us not up hence. Now, what is this all about, preacher? Well, God has said to Moses, Moses, I want you to take my people out of the land of bondage, out of the land of Egypt. I want you to take them to a land that flows with milk and honey and the land of Canaan. Now, I want you to take them basically to the promised land. And uh, Moses said, well, Lord, before we go, I want to know you personally. Now, I, I have a great task, he tells them, and therefore, I have a great need. Mm, say amen. Listen, and he prays, church, in verse 13. Oh, God, he said, show me thy way. Oh, I want you to pray that prayer right now. Let's pray it together. Oh God, I pray, please, mighty God, show me the way I'm pleading with you on this morning. You need to pray that prayer as Moses prayed. Show me the way, God, in my life. Do you see it in your Bible? Underscore it and pray it every day. Look at it with your eyes. He said, show me thy way. Just put a big star in your Bible or on your phone, wherever it is. You mark your Bible right there, Cloverland. Show me now thy way, Moses said. That's a key verse in all of the Bible. Moses, church, facing a great task, says, God, please show me the way. Now, this was a prayer, a significant prayer, and God answered that prayer. Psalm 103 and verse 7 says this, He made known his ways unto who? Moses. 
and his acts unto the children of Israel. So that means it tells me, church, that when Moses asked God to show him the way, the psalmist said in Psalm 103, verse 7, he did it. Praise the mighty name of Jehovah. Listen, now, notice in Psalm 103, in verse 7, God mentions two things. God mentions his ways and his acts. I don't want you to miss this. Listen, he showed his ways to Moses and he showed his acts to the children of Israel. You may be thinking, preacher, what does that mean? What's the difference? Well, you say, what is the difference, Brother Woods? Well, you better learn that difference today because it will certainly do something in your heart and in your life if you'll learn that difference between knowing the ways of God and the acts of God. Please, I tell you, pay attention to me today, not because I'm preaching, because the word of God is being spoken. You see, so many people know simply the acts of God. They see what God does, but they don't know the ways of God. Did you know there's a difference? They don't know who God is. And if you'll see in, in, in church, and if all you see are the acts of God, and you don't know the ways of God, you ought to be pitied. Now, I want to talk to you today about knowing not just simply what God does, but who God is. Now, just simply knowing about God, the acts of God, but, but knowing God, that is the ways of God. Now, there are three things, church, that will happen if you will know the ways of God. If God, if God reveals himself to you as he revealed himself to Moses, and oh, I pray God, He'll do that for you and for me today. Listen, first of all, may I say, dear friend, when you know the ways of God, that is a personal relationship. That's what Jesus is saying over there in Matthew 7, verse 21 and following. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work in iniquity. Now look in verse 14 again in Exodus 33. And he said, my presence shall go with thee. God told Moses, church, my presence will be with you wherever you go. Oh, mighty light. Now, it's just not that I'm sending you, Moses. I will go with you. Somebody ought to shout with me today. My presence, he tells them, will go with you. Now, Moses said, I I'm going up there, Lord, but Lord, you better be with me. Church, you need to start telling God that. And God said, don't you worry, Moses, my presence will be with you. Now, this is knowing God intimately, church. Oh, it gets me excited. I may want to jump out of my suit. Church, again, if you look in verse 11, you'll see something about this intimacy. And the Lord spake unto Moses, when? Where? Face to face. Oh, I want God to speak to me. Do you want God to speak to you face to face? And as a man, the Bible says, speak it unto his friend. Are you seeing this in your Bible? Do you know that, do you know God that way? Do you know God as, as the Bible says, he spoke to Moses face to face as you're speaking to your friend? So much of our praying is, is we're praying at God rather than talking with God. Do you know God, church, face to face? Do you have a conversation with the Lord? And as a man speaks with his friend, you see, to know the ways of God, it is an intimate and personal relationship with God Almighty. Do you know the problem with many people and even in the church? They are infatuated with God. Church, I see, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I see people join churches who are infatuated with God. They'll come to a church and hear the singing. They like the, the singing in that church that has been just sung or whatever. They will see sweet fellowship and they'll hear somebody testify about how God healed them or they'll see some miracle or they'll learn about some blessing and they say, man, I want that in my life. I really like what God is doing. I see what God is doing. I want to get on what God is doing, but they don't know God. All they see, church, is what God is doing, his acts. And so they are infatuated with God. 
Are you following me? And so that's the way some people fall in love or think they're in love, amen, and get married. They get infatuated. They, that's not really love at all, church. And they see some girl and a guy, and a guy sees a girl and he's like, he likes her style. He sees her beauty. He sees her charm. He sees her, her wit. He sees all of these things, Global Land, and he says, I like that. Oh, his heart begins to thump it thump, and he, and he proposed it to her, amen, and they get married. But he doesn't really know that girl yet, does he? He's just infatuated. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. <laughs> man, uh, church, let me listen to me. Many a man has fallen in love with a dimple and married the whole girl. You'll get it later when you get in the car. Listen, church, and, and, and listen, and guess what? And, and later on in that marriage, he discovers who it is that he married. And he didn't even really know her. See, somebody has well said, it. you better keep your eyes wide open before marriage and half shut from, the, from their own. Dear friend, listen, <laughs> we, we just get infatuated is what I'm telling you. I see people get infatuated with God. That is about it. They, they see God do something wonder, wonderful or they get in some great glorious services. They say, isn't God great? And dear friend, that's just infatuation. You don't know, you only know the works of God. You don't know the ways of God. Now, if you only know the works of God and you don't know the ways of God, sooner or later, you're going to get into difficulty. Yes, you are. For example, let me help you. Let me give you an, an, an illustration. Later on, we read in John chapter two, and in the story of John chapter two is the story of Jesus turning water into wine at a wedding. And remember that story, amen? Jesus took six water jars full of water and about 120 gallons of water, and he turned it into uh, uh, pure sparkling wine. Now, the Bible says when he did that, he manifested his glory. I mean, he saw, I mean, what, what they saw rather, the glory of God. They saw a great miracle. And then that same second chapter of John says it says this, many believed on him when they saw the miracle that he did. Oh, church, I'm trying to help you here. Oh boy, they liked that, didn't they? Anybody, church, who can turn water into wine, I want to join up. Amen. You do too. But continue to read the chapter and, and look what it says. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them. For he knew man and needed not that any should testify what was in man. Jesus, church, knew they were only miracle mongers. Jesus knew they only followed him because he had turned water into wine. But Jesus also knew that down in their heart, listen church, they didn't know, love or respect him for who he was. And that's how some of you are. See, they only saw his acts. They, didn't, they did not truly know his ways. The same thing is true about Moses here. Now, Moses is going to lead these people out and he's going to find how fickle the children of Israel are and you're right there in the neighborhood if you would just turn with me to well 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 now I want to do that well we really don't have time so let me just tell you the story okay now Moses is with the children of Israel and he's going to lead them out of the land of bondage so they get to the Red Sea you remember the story and the Red Sea opens up. It congeals on both sides, as the Bible tells us. And the people go marching, singing songs, hymns through the Red Sea on dry ground. Amen. Well, dear friend, you talk about being ecstatic. You talk about being happy. You talk about leaping and dancing and praising God. There's the first recorded song in the Bible right there next to chapter 15. Church, they sang a song of Moses and the Lamb. They said, what a man of God we have to lead us. What a great God we have. Hallelujah for Moses and the Lamb. But three days later, church, they found themselves out there in the wilderness 
with no water, and they began to carp and to criticize Moses, didn't they? They said, now, why did you bring us out here <laughs> to perish in the wilderness? You remember that? And oh, did they scrawl, did they scorn, did they carp and gripe? And in three days, church, Moses has gone from hero to zero. Why? Because they were infatuated at the Red Sea. All they saw were the works of God and they didn't know the ways of God. In church, that's how some of our mem uh, 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 peep Christians are. I'll give you another illustration of how you can see God's uh, works or, and, not, not, and, and, and not know God's ways. And after a while, church, you can get jaded or you can find out you were uh, only infatuated with God. Church, remember the story in John chapter 9 of the man who was born blind and Jesus healed him. And the Pharisees came and uh, they were angry because Jesus had opened the eyes of this man on what? The Sabbath day. And they got, uh, they got this man up there and they began to interrogate, interrogate him and they said, uh, tell us who healed you. What were his credentials? Today, that would have said, what seminary did he graduate from? What were his credentials? Who was this man who healed you? Who did this thing? I mean, they couldn't deny that his eyes had been opened and they said, tell us, was he a sinner or not? Now, here's what the man said. He said, whether he was a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I was once blind and now I see. Well, that's fine, church, isn't it? That's good, that's a good testimony as far as it goes because that's all he did, did know. But, but he didn't know whether Jesus Christ was a sinner or whether he wasn't a sinner. All he knew, Cloverland, was that he opened his eyes. In church, that's a good testimony as far as it goes. Now, my dear friend, listen to me. That would not have been a good testimony a month or two later or even uh, three or four years later to see whether he's a sinner or not, and, and I don't know. Now listen, if all you see is the works of God in your life, that, may, that might make you a testifier, but it will never make you a teacher. You have to know, church, the ways of God to be a teacher. See, all this man saw were the works of God, and I was blind, now I see. Whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But I'm telling you today, there are kinds of people who know the works of God, but they don't understand the ways of God. They see what God does, church, but they don't know who God is. They don't understand the heart of God. You've got to know the heart of God. And so Moses prays in our text, Oh God, show me the way. The Bible says he made known his ways unto Moses, but he made known his acts unto the children of Israel. He did two things, didn't he? And may I tell you that knowing the ways of God is a very intimate thing. It is a very personal relationship. You see, Brandy knows my ways. I know the ways of Brandy, and I can tell you what Brandy is going to do before she ever does it. I mean, I, I just know her ways. For example, I was uh, picking up my wife one day, and, and I was telling our daughter what her mom was about to do. Watch her. She's going to do so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so, and and so -and -so, I was telling my daughter. And I knew how she was going to touch me, and I knew how she was going to put her arms on me. I just know her ways. I know when she's going to get romantic. I know that gal is what I'm telling you. I mean, I can just telegraph what she's going to do. And I just, I'm just going to put it this, this, this friend on notice. That's exactly what, what Brandy is going to do, and, what's, what, and that's exactly what she did. Now, my dear friend, you have to live with a person to know their ways. Isn't that true? You see, to know the ways of God, that is a personal relationship. You gotta live with God, church. You gotta read what God wants to say to your heart. 
Now I want to say something else. Watch it. Don't miss it. Not only is it a personal relationship, it becomes a very peaceful relationship. Oh, I'm preaching. You don't know it yet. Church, listen, if you don't know the ways of God, you're never going to have peace in your life. That's why a lot of you have a lot of turmoil and hate and anger in your heart and in your household because you don't have a personal relationship with God and that personal relationship leads to peace. If you don't know the ways of God, you're never going to have peace. If all you know is about God is what you see God do, friend, you're going to be blown out of the water half the time because what God does is not going to make sense unless you know God's ways. And that's why many of us panic during this pandemic. Now, let me show you, give you a, 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 another passage of scripture here. Well, look, first of all, in, in verse 14 in Exodus 33, and he says, look at your Bible. My presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. My presence will go with thee. That's a personal relationship. God's presence is going with Moses and I will give you rest as you go with him as God goes with you he's present with you he's going to give you rest that's a peaceful relationship you see it it is God's presence that alone that gives you peace somebody ought to say amen in the time of the storm now let me show you the New Testament commentary on this turn to Hebrews chapter 3 real quickly Come on, Bible scholars, with me just a moment. It's worth turning to. That's why I want you to turn with me, or you can see it on, on the bottom of the screen. Just go ahead and, and turn with me, though, with me to it. Chapter 3, and look with me, if you will, beginning in about verse 7. Hebrews chapter 3 and uh, verse 7, it says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart into the provocation as the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Now, he's going all the way back, church, to when Moses was leading the uh, Hebrews through the wilderness. Do you see that? He says, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, that is, put me to the test, and saw my what? What's the next word? Works. You see that? Forty years, they saw the works of God, all kinds of miracles, but notice in verse 10 in Hebrews. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and have not known my ways. Church, do you see it? That is Bible what I'm preaching today. What did they say? They, or rather, rather, what did they see? They saw God works. Why did they mess up, church? Because that's a, a lot of us mess up. Why was God grieved with them? 40 years, they saw the works of God, and I've come to tell you, many of you are in the church for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 10 years, and haven't changed a bit because all you saw or all you have seen is the works of God and never gain and never know the ways of God. See, they didn't know his ways, and neither some of you don't. He made known, church, his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. And I don't want you to be the children of Israel. I don't want God only to show you the acts. Oh, I come today to preach to you. You need to know the ways of old God. Church, listen, my dear friend, if you see God's works, if you see God's works and you don't know God's ways, you're going to be confused because God works don't always make sense. That's why this world, a lot of people don't, uh, is in suicide, have committed suicide. A lot of people don't know what's going on today uh, with, this, with, with everything because they, God's ways don't make sense to them. You see, if, if you just see the works of God, not the ways and know the ways of God, you're going to be pushing the panic button half of the time in your life. Now, you, now church, it's about the time. You think you have it all figured out, how God's going to work and he does something different in your life. Let me give you another illustration on that point. Two men are, were put in prison by, by wicked King Herod. You remember? James and Peter over there in Acts chapter 3. Now James is put in prison and he is killed by Herod. He is martyred. Peter is put in prison 
and Peter is miraculously delivered. And an angel comes and gets Simon Peter out of prison. Now, James dies, but Peter doesn't. Was God sovereign in both cases? Indeed, he was. That God, well, the God that got Peter out of prison could have gotten James out of prison, but he didn't. See, a lot of you may be answering, why God, why did you kill my friend? Why did you let my, this, my coworker, why did you let my family member die during COVID, but you saved me? See, listen, let me try to help you. Now, if all you see, church, is the works of God in your life, one time you're going to say, well, I don't want to serve a God who lets James kill, be killed. And another time you'll say, boy, I want to serve the God that got Peter out of prison. Yo, you follow me? Let me give you another illustration. This same Peter, on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, he stood up and preached to, to, uh, to 3,000 souls, and they were baptizing, and, and they put their faith in Christ, and they were converted. Wasn't that wonderful, church? You'll say, well, boy, I like what God does. God uses preachers to preach, and when they preach, if they're filled with the Holy Ghost, they're going to have a lot of people say and, and that's the sign of a man filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, you go on through the book of Acts, church, and after a while, you'll find out a, another preacher whose name was Stephen. He stood up just like Peter did and preached in chapter 7 and 8. He didn't get 3,000 souls. He got 3,000 stones thrown at him. They stoned him to death, church, filled with the Holy Ghost, just like Peter was. Now, friend, if you're standing around just watching God's works, you'll say, if, if I go to prison and I'm going to be killed, or is an angel going to take me out? And if I preach the gospel and I'm going to have a lot of people say, or am I going to get stoned? And you remember another person, John the Baptist. Is, he's been standing out there, church, in the river of Jordan, preaching the word of God. And oh boy, great crowds were coming to him. And then church, John the Baptist got thrown in jail, didn't he? And he found out, oh, he found out it's one thing to stand on Jordan to, and give it, and it's another thing to be in jail and take it. And church, he's down in the jail now. And, and John the Baptist gets so frustrated and so confused in jail, he, he almost loses his faith. He sent his disciples, some of his messengers, to Jesus, and he said, you go back to Jesus, the one I said is the Lamb of God, and you ask him, are you really the one, or should we look for someone else? Here was a man, Cloverland. He couldn't figure out what God was doing. If he's so great and he's so powerful, what am I doing here rotting in the dungeon? All I'm trying to say to you on this morning, folks, is this, that you're on for a roll, real roller coaster ride if all you know about God is what God does and you don't know the heart of God. Oh, church, the only time you'll have the rest, the only way you'll ever have true peace in your life is not by observing the works of God, but by knowing the heart of God. Because when you cannot trace his hand, you can always trust his heart. You have better listen who God is, church, not simply what God does. Now, let me go on. May I tell you, dear friend, we're back in Exodus chapter 3, uh, uh, 33 now. <laughs> Amen. And I'm saying to you, to you today, to know the ways of God is a personal relationship with God. To know the ways of God is a peaceful relationship with God. And then thirdly, to know the ways of God is a powerful relationship with God. Look, if you will, if you don't mind, back in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 15. I've been reading Exodus 33 verses, uh, chapter uh, 33, verse 15 and 14, I mean 13 and 14 rather. Now look at verse 15. And Moses said, he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry it. <laughs> you, you see that in your Bible? He says, carry us up, carry us up, not, uh, uh, not up hence. That is, God, if you don't go, I'm not going. And then notice verse 16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people 
have found grace in thy sight. That is a question. That is, God, I want to, I want it uh, to be seen. I want it to be known, Lord, that you are working and that your grace is there. Is it not that in that that thou goest with us? Now, not in anything else except, Lord, in your presence. And so we shall, uh, and so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Now, in verse 17, ladies and gentlemen, he says this, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Now what, what, now what, why did you say that, preacher, is a powerful relationship? Because, dear friend, Moses is not interceding for people. Did you know that the, that, that, that the only people who really know how to intercede, the people who really know how to touch the heart of God, or those people who know the ways of God, you cannot pray as a prayer warrior, and you cannot intercede, you cannot touch history, you cannot lead, you cannot teach, you cannot be the man, the woman of God that you need to be until you know the ways of God. And Moses' church was a great leader because he knew how to pray and intercede for his people. You see him later on standing in the gap for his people who had uh, sinned a great sin. But he just stands in the gap for his people the same way that Abraham did. But by the way, we, we've not finished our series on that, but I want to get a series and talk about old Abraham, amen? Now, so many of us, don't know how to pray. So many of us don't know how to get what we need from God because all we see are the works of God and we don't understand the ways of God. And we're spending so much time seeking God's hand and when we need to be seeking God's face. We're asking God to do things rather than to know God and to know lo the love of God. And let me get on right down to the crucible of the matter. How can you know the ways of God, okay? Let me give you some steps real quickly and the lesson will be yours. Get your pen, get your pencil, get your phone, open up your notes app and you put it down. I want you to talk, I wanna to talk to you about real briefly about how you can know God personally and intimately as Moses did. How you can know God with that personal relationship. How you can know God with that peaceful relationship. And how you can know God with that powerful relationship that you ought to have in your life this morning. Now, thank God, church, we have an example right here in Exodus 33. Moses has prayed and said, oh God, show me the way. I told you to pray that earlier. And the Lord here is going to do it and he will do it in your life as well. Now we've been in chapter 33 for, the, for, the, for this lesson, but let's look on in chapter 34 real briefly. And let me tell you this, dear friend, you're not going to know the ways of God by reasoning. Can a, can a man by reason find out God? No, his ways are past finding out, the Bible says. You're not going to know the ways of God by research. You're not going to know him by studying history. All you can do by reason and research, all you can do is to know the works of God. The only way you can know the way of God is by revelation. You know the works of God by reason and by research, but you know the ways of God by revelation. Say amen. And by the way, let me just say this. Revelation is by direct dealing with God. How do I know Brandy as I know her? How does she knows me? We've had so much communication, so much direct dealing, no secondhand knowledge. I haven't been reading books about Brandy. I've been living with her. Let me say this, if you're a counselor, and all of us are counselors, by the way, or some way, but suppose somebody comes with you and they have a problem, and they come to you and they have a problem, well, if you tell what to do, tell them what to do, and you don't get them in a in direct communication with God, you fail. Now, so many people want me as a counselor to say, tell me what to do. Oh, my dear friend, my job as a counselor may be indeed to give you some advice, but my job is to bring you into the presence of God to get you to know the ways of God personally and intimately. 
all right here it is. Let me give you the steps right here real quick. Now, Moses is getting ready for his encounter with the Lord in a deeper way. And we're in chapter 34. Let me give you these steps. Step one is preparation. Look in verse one and, uh, and, and, uh, and two. And the Lord uh, unto Moses, said unto Moses, hew thee tablets of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tablets the words that were in the first tablets which thou breakest, and be ready in the morning. And came up in the mountain up on Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of on the mount. Do you do that in the morning, church? Are you ready in the morning to present yourself to the Lord? And do you bring some tablets to write on? I mean, you're expecting to meet God when you wake up in the morning. You're wanting to have this personal time with God. And my dear friend, there needs to come that preparation. God says, if you're going to meet me in the morning, be ready. So many times, church, so we so come so carelessly into the presence of God and we just mumble and stutter. We're not ready for anything. All right. First of all, preparation. Prepare your heart. Now, number two, isolation. Look, if you will, in verse three. And no man, man shall come with thee. Moses, you be ready and you be ready of what? Alone. You want to know me? You, God tells you today, you want to know my ways, brothers and sisters, God is saying to you, then you get along with me. Now, Moses had to separate himself from a nation of three million people. Well, wasn't there, uh, he the, their leader, Brother Woods? Absolutely he was. But my dear friend, if you are a Sunday school teacher or who, whomever you are, if you are a minister, an elder, a deacon, whoever you are, the best time you'll spend for your people is not when you're with them, but when you're with God. Oh, church, is the, best, the better person I become is because I'm with God to help you. I mean, dear friend, if you have to separate yourself from them for them to get along with God in a time of isolation, so be it. Listen, preachers need to do this. Sunday school need, teachers need to do this. Parents need to do this. Husbands and wives need to do this. Grandfathers and grandmothers need to do this. Jesus taught us when we, to, we, when we ought to pray to get along. We need to shut the door off of the, from the world and open the window to heaven. Jesus says, when you pray, enter into your closet and shut the door. Your father, which see in secret, will reward you in secret. You study the history of the saints, or opening rather. Their greatest blessings came when they were alone. Abraham was alone with God, appeared to him under the oak of memory. Daniel was alone when God appeared to him. Paul was alone in Arabia when God spoke to him. Peter was alone uh, uh, on the rooftop when God spoke to him. John was alone on the island of Pathmas when God spoke to him. Moses was alone up here on the mountaintop in the wilderness. All right, church, what I'm telling you is you need to get along. Now watch it. You need to know God personally. Preparation, isolation, and expectation. That's the third one. Expect God to meet you when you do this. Notice here in verses four through seven. I got to hear it. And he hewed through two tablets of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And took in his hand the two tables of stone. Why did he take the tables of stone with him, church? Well, he expected God to give him something. He expected to get it written down. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will be by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation, the Bible says. Church, what a revelation of God Moses had on that tablet. And Moses was expecting a revelation. Now, friend, when you come to that time of preparation and at the time of isolation, do you come to a time of expectation? How many of you don't raise, how many of you don't 
Don't raise your hand. I can see you through the television. Amen. But how many of you have a quiet time where you also have a notebook? Many of you don't even come to church with a notebook. I tell you why you're not expecting to hear much. I mean, if you say, hey, I'm going to, to get something good, you come prepared to write it down. You say, I remember it. No, you won't. I can't even remember it, and I preach it unless I write it down. Amen? Now, I'm going to tell you, my dear friend, that the weakest ink is better than the best memory. Get something to write down so that you can have a record of what God shows you through these lessons. You ought to have a spiritual journal. Let me tell you how to get get spiritual truth my dear friend you you get the word of god out and as god begins to speak you ask yourself is there a lesson to learn is there a sin to avoid is there a blessing to enjoy is there a new truth to assimilate you begin to ask yourself these questions and as God speaks to your heart every Sunday, not just simply about what it means then, but what it means to you personally, let me tell you what you ought to do. You write it down, Cloverland. But first of all, you think it through. And you, then you write it down, and then you pray it in. Pray it in your heart. Pray the Bible back to God, and pray my sermons back to God. And I say, God, is this true? Is this what you want to say? Is this what you mean? And I talk to God about it. You pray it in, you write it down, and you think it out. You write it down, and you pray it in some more. I tell you, Cloverland, what else you ought to do, my dear friend? You got to live it out. When you find something in the morning, and God gives you a truth, don't wait to put it into action. I mean, as God, as God gives it to you, find a way to put it on shoe leather. Whatever it is, sure, just begin to live out the truth in your life. Express that truth in your life and then pass it on. Share it with somebody else. I mean, give it away, ladies and gentlemen. The more of the word of God you give away, the more the word of God will speak to you. Have you got it this morning? Look, read it through, think it out, write it down, pray it in, live it out, and pass it on. That's a great song, isn't it? That's it. You see, listen, as you get along with God, have quiet time, Cloverland, with God Almighty. And I'm telling you, church, you need to know God's ways. And listen, as I close, <laughs> preparation, isolation, expectation. And then, my dear friend, adoration. Look, if you will, right here in verse 8. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the Lord and did what? And worshiped. That's the way to know God this morning. We become like what we worship as we adore him, church, and praise him today and glorify him. Then you're going to know, my dear friend, the ways of God. You're not going to know the ways of God by studying a theologic, theologi, theolo, theology textbook. You're not going to know the ways of God by listening to Darius Woods preach about the ways of God. You are going to know the ways of God when you get alone by yourself and you get you, your worship God, you worship God alone and you adore him. Adoration. Then intercession. Verse 9, he said, if, if now I found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let, me, let my Lord, I pray thee, go amongst us. For it is a stiff-necked people, he tells them, and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for thine inheritance. Now, are you ready to intercede? Intercession, church, that's a part of your quiet time. I wish I had more time for that, but let me just give you the last point, and it is observation. Now, verses 10 and 11, he said, God says to him, behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvel such as I have not done in all the earth, nor in any nation and all the people among which thou art, thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Now, also in verse 11, I observe that thou which I command thee this day. Observation. Jesus said, if you know these things happen or you, if you do them. May I give you one of the greatest truths that I can possibly give you as I close. I'm going to give it and, I, and then I'm finished. Bible study will give you knowledge about God. Obedience will give you knowledge of God. Bible study only gives you knowledge about God. But church, it is not until you obey that you begin to know 
Jesus said, he hath my word and keeps it. That's the one that loves me. And the one that loves me is the one to whom I will manifest myself. I want you to know, dear, your, dear friend, God. I want you to know God personally. I want you to know Cloverland God peacefully. And I want you to know God powerfully. Bow by your heads in prayer with me. Father God, I pray now that you will seal this message today to our hearts and to our lives and that we get to know you on an intimate level, not just know your works. Oh, God, help us to be better right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for our message, knowing God intimately. If you're not a, a Christian today, you become one by faith, hearing God's word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing God's word. You got to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Repent, confess, be baptized for the remission of your sins and remain faithful unto death. If we can help you with that, call us, send us an email. We'll meet you. And we'll baptize you that day. We'll, 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 we'll make you committed to the Lord Jesus. And, and, and through, uh, through studying God's word, you will become a disciple. Thank you for joining us and being a part of our 945 worship here virtually at the Cloverland Church of Christ. God bless you. We love you. See you next time. It may not be on the mountain height or over the stormy sea. It may not be at the battle's front. My Lord will have need of me. But if by still small voice he calls to pass that I do not know, I'll answer, dear Lord, with my hand in thine. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. Perhaps today there are loving words which Jesus would have me speak. There Savior, if thou wilt be my guide, though dark and rugged the way, my voice shall echo the message sweet. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll go where you want me to go. or plain or sea I'll say what you want me to say dear Lord I'll be what you want me to be There's surely somewhere a lowly place in earth's harvest field so wide where I may labor through life's short day for Jesus the crucified so trusting my all to thy tender care and knowing thou lovest me I'll do thy will with a heart sincere. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll go where you want me.
me to go, dear Lord, over mountain or plain or sea. I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. Another part of our worship, which is known as communing, we find in Acts 20 and verse 7, where Paul writes, Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, and read you the part the morrow. We also have another example in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and follows. And Paul writes, For I have received of the Lord what I also pass unto you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drink the cup of the Lord is an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself before he eat the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats, the, eats and drink without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drink judgment unto himself. That's why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you with bowed heads and humble hearts. Thank you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. Father, thank you for allowing us to be on this time side of life. Father, we just ask you, thank you for this bread that represents thy son's broken body and the cup which represents thy son's shed blood. We pray that we take it with pure and clean hearts and our minds will not forget the meaning of it. In your son Jesus' name, we do humbly pray. Amen. Another part of our worship, which is known as the offering, we have an example found in 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Where Paul also writes, Now concerning the collection for the saints that have given us to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has promised him, that there be no gathering when I come. We also have an example in 2 Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, where Paul also writes, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously, generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You may give at this time or come back to the building and drop up your, drop up your offering. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, once again we come to you with bowed heads, humble hearts. Thank you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for allowing us to come again to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray that this offering be used in the manner of keeping thy kingdom. Father, we pray for those who had the desire to give but had not, that you may restore them their give at the next appointed time. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's stop the fighting. Let's stop the fighting. Let's stop the fighting. 